So, questions? So, thank you. And indeed, do any people have any questions for Walter? One in the back. Maybe a naive question, but in, in what, what programming language do you write a programming language? Oh, the old bootstrap problem, you know, the chicken and egg thing. <laughs> well, the answer is the dinosaur came first. <laughs> and in programming languages, well, I used the dinosaur language to uh, write the initial version in. Um, no, I actually used C to write the C++ compiler, then I used the C++ compiler to write D, so... <laughs> so, yes, the 1972 vintage uh, language was the initial bootstrap language. I didn't go as far as doing it in uh, assembly language. Um, that would have been a bit too much work. Yes, so, so, you, so the compiler, the decompiler, is, is written in C++? Originally, yes. Yeah, and right, right now? Uh, not anymore. The back end is still in C++, but the front end is written in D now. Ah, okay, so D gets compiled by D. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And it also shows that D can work with C++ because it's hooked up to a C++ back end. So we want to get that converted over too, but that's the next project. Why did you call the D programming language D? What? <laughs> that is a great question. Um, it started out as a Mars programming language. You know, Digital Mars was my company, so it's the Mars programming language. I thought, you know, Mars is a cool name. And when I described the language to people, they would always laugh and say, oh, it's D, you know, C, C++, D, so it's D. And so I kept getting called D by all my friends and colleagues, and eventually, you know, we just kind of gave up correcting them <laughs> and went with the flow and called it D. So... It's kind of, I guess, uh, crowdsourced <laughs> how it came to be called D. Yeah, but to, to go back a, a little bit in time, you, you, at the beginning of your presentation, you said, okay, um, um, I, I, was, I was working, and uh, then I suddenly de um, decided to write my own program la programming language. I just want to zoom in on that particular moment in time where you think, um, I can make new software, I can build new applications, I can, uh, I can, I can do other, all kinds of stuff, but I'm deciding to build a completely new programming language, which is, most, which is maybe one of the hardest things to do. Why did you decide to do that? Because people told me I couldn't. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I started writing a C compiler in the 80s, a friend of mine took me to see the local C guru and to give me some advice on building a C compiler. And, you know, he looked at me and he says, who the F, and you know what that word is, do you think you are thinking you can write a C compiler? Which turned out to be very motivating to me. <laughs> it's like, I can do it. <laughs> so, in 1999, you know, I was tired of working on C++ and, and basically tired of complaining about it. You know, I've implemented a whole C++ compiler to from, from front to back, and I've been working with it for a long time, and I see all these problems. And I keep thinking of ways to fix them. You know, I'm an engineer, I can't help but think ways to fix them, and finally des decided that I'm, I'm tired of whining. I'm gonna, you know, put my money where my mouth is, and if he, even if I'm the only user, I'm gonna do it right. So it's kind of a similar motivation to everyone who writes their own programming languages. They have a vision, they want to do it right, and they want to do it their way. So you mentioned there were some things uh, that you uh, were annoyed about in C++. Did you fix them in D? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, all successfully? Uh, yeah, like there's no preprocessor in D. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's a giant, a giant problem. I still don't know why the C++ standards committee has not removed the... They can't remove the preprocessor because of backwards compatibility, but they haven't re yet removed the need for the preprocessor. Um, C++ has gradually been a, 
um, adopting uh, things that D has been doing for a while, you know, like modules. That thing with the underscores and the integer literals, that's a new C++ feature, except they're using, I think, uh, quote marks instead of the under bars. What we'll question over here? Um, thank you for the talk. Um, over the years, C has gotten more and more criticism about being unsafe and being dated, and newer languages like Rust and Go have appeared, being safe yet performant. And how does D relate to this and fit into this picture? Um, D has a attribute you can put on code called at safe. And if you if code appears in at safe, it's designed to not be possible to have pointer bugs with it. And it's not perfect. We still have to work on that a bit. But that's, that's the goal for that. And we're working on lifetime management things so that we can implement safe reference counting uh, schemes as well. Uh, current, currently, without the reference counting, you have to use the garbage collector to be guaranteed of safety. That's one of the great attractions of garbage collection is guaranteed memory safety. But we want to support reference counting with the same level of safety. So that's an active uh, topic of how to make that work in the D forms. And we're not going to do it like Rust. We're going to do it our own way, but we're going to get the same result. Question over there. So we heard about the benefits of D. And what is a um, specific kind of system that you should not use D for? Not use D for. If you're writing, and um, if you're trying to fit your code into a 1K prom, <laughs> D's not going to work for you. If you're going to write code on a 16-bit system or develop on DOS, D's not going to work for you. It's uh, a more modern language, and it needs a more powerful, or it's designed to work well on 32-bit and 64-bit processors. So if you're working with a more primitive setup, you're probably not going to be able to use D. If you're using a digital a DSP, digital signal processor, you, and it also isn't available yet on like GPUs. Although some people think we should get it running on GPUs. Uh, you said about uh, D. Uh, I'm, my question is uh, C++ and C are mainly for embedded system where C++ supports object-oriented uh, design and programming. Uh, does C like has some uh, unique uh, problem set that it solves, or and does it support uh, object-oriented uh, programming like C++ or not? Does D support object-oriented programming? Yeah. Yes, it does. It supports it very much like Java does, with a single-rooted, uh, single-rooted inheritance with multiple inheritance of interfaces. So why should you use D and not C++? Or uh, my question is, what does it? What, what is more? What does it solve more than uh, C plus um, plus? That's a difficult question to answer easily. But the most general answer to that is D is much more amenable. It's much more plastic than C plus plus. C plus plus. It's more, much more difficult to get your code right. And when you finally get it right, you're reluctant to change it. With D, I found that. You can take a piece of D code and make it C++ code run just as fast. But what you can do with the D code is easily change algorithms with it and change your data structures much more easily. So it becomes much more plastic and encourages experimenting with different data structures, different algorithms, to find one that runs faster. And that's the secret of how you can get a lot of speed improvements over C++ code. Because once you get your C++ code to work, you kind of don't dare change anything in it. And I found that with my own code. You know, Once I got it to work, I don't want to mess with it. With D, I feel a lot freer to play with the algorithms and the data structures and try different approaches to see if I can make it go faster. Yep, another one over here. If you are. Uh if I've understood well, C or D is basically made of D, C, sorry? I don't understand the question. D language is basically made of C, if I'm right? Or? Uh, D definitely has a heritage from a C and C++. The syntax is very similar, for example. But is it also possible to communicate between the two languages? Ah, or? can you cook them together? Yes. You can hook D directly up to C code 
without any translation layer. You can call C functions directly. You can also call C++ functions and C++ templates directly from uh, decode. And what I've been working on lately is making it so that you can throw an exception from C++ code and catch it in decode. And what that'll enable D then to be is right now it has access to every C library out there through its C interface. And we want to be also be able to access that huge, uh, wonderful library of C++ code that's out there. Uh, do you think that some of the modern languages are just become popular by the companies behind them? Well, I'm sure that absolutely has a role, because when you've got a billion dollars to your, your marketing budget, you can make a lot of things happen. Uh, so you co <laughs> cooperate with those companies to make the D more of a standard? Cooperate with the companies? Well, yeah, we welcome like corporate sponsorship. Okay, <laughs> of course. Okay, thank you. And that's why we're doing the D Foundation, is to provide a framework so that corporations can, can get involved with D. Before the foundation, it was kind of difficult for them to do so. Is adding the things like the exception handling helping with integration uh, of D inside of traditional C, larger C application by you, where you can basically import D for your newer parts? Does it, does it help for, for the adoption array? Um, the exception handling will help connect with existing C++ code. It already connects well with existing C code. Um, the only thing it doesn't connect with is, C, is the C preprocessor abuse. So if you're doing uh, metaprogramming with a C preprocessor, you're gonna, uh, that's not going to work so well, hook up so well with D. D doesn't know anything about preprocessor macros. Yeah, in the back. Um, I was wondering if you make a living of developing the D language. Uh, no, but I do make some income off of uh, consulting and helping people with it and doing seminars and things like that. So, um. would, you, would you want to do this full time? I, I am doing it full time. So. Um, I started on it when I had uh, retired because I sold my company to Symantec and then retired and then um, was watching TV for about six weeks and that got really, really, really old and I went back to work. <laughs> I mean, I, I plan on working on D until my brain doesn't work anymore, where, whenever that happens to be. So any other questions from the audience? Uh, when writing C++ code, my biggest problem us is usually uh, finding the compiler error, or rather exactly where the error happens. Is there, any oh. is there anything in D that uh, makes, ma makes it more easy to find the error? Ah, oh, that is a great question. Um, there's some features in D that you, as a library writer, can use to write custom error messages. And that can be a huge help with people who are using your code, because instead of getting some random worm's eye view compiler error message, it can be a custom one saying that you're not conforming to this interface because you're missing this feature of your data type. So that's going to be, uh, that's a huge help if you're willing to make the effort to use custom error messages or work them in your code. Um, that said, C++ error messages have gotten a lot better over the years. It's not nearly as bad as it was 10 years ago, but I think custom error messages matching your library thing are really the wave of the future because no compiler is ever going to auto-generate messages as good as uh, something carefully written by the library developer can do. Yep. Is this inclusive uh, um, with the linking errors you get with if you forget a uh, single line of code here, CPP file, so uh, um, that you get a linking error with a strange random generated uh, code after it? It's sometimes very difficult to find. <laughs> Sadly, um, we decided to stick with standard linkers, and that means you're stuck with the way they do error messages. <laughs> Uh, we don't have the resources to do our own uh, linkers.
So if we could, we probably would, but that's that's a major effort to write a linker, and uh, it's, uh, there are huge benefits of being compatible with standard linkers, except for the error messages. That's the, that's the one the one downside. <laughs> but you do need to to still write your your separate header files and and nope. code files. Ah. Nope. In okay. D, your header files and implementation files are the same files. Um, and the reason why that works is because the D compiler, the D language is designed to be fast to parse, and it is fast to parse, so instead of creating a separate header file, you just run the, the source file through it, and it parses it really fast and pulls out the uh, public declarations, and there you go. So you don't have to write header files anymore. So final question. Uh, you've compared D to Oh. You've compared the deep programming language to C and C++. How would you compare it to other mo modern emerging system programming languages like Go and Rust? The pro problem with me comparing it with Go and Rust is I've never written programs in Go and Rust, so um, I'd be speaking lar largely out of ignorance. I know a lot about C and C++, so I kind of feel qualified to judge that, but I'm just not qualified to judge against uh, Go or Rust. So I'll leave that to others. There have been a number of comparisons about it written on, on the web by people who are much uh, more uh, expert at those languages. And to do a fair comparison, you really need to be an expert in it. I can't just read the spec for Go and then make an intelligent comparison with it. That just isn't, it isn't fair and it isn't right for me to even try. So. I'm going to I'm going to beg off on that one. <laughs> so uh, one one final question from from my part that's bu been bugging me the whole uh time during your presentation. What kind of machine are you actually using because uh, as as you progressed it it get it got older and older in my head. So what what the, what are you using? I'm using a machine I cobbled together from parts I ordered from newegg.com because nobody actually makes the one I want because uh, one of my goals is quiet, so I needed a graphics card that had enough pixels to handle the large display but had no fan. And I managed to find one for 50 bucks on Newegg, which was just perfect. And it wouldn't play video games because the, the ones you normally buy that have that many pixels are designed for gamers. Well, I'm not interested in gaming. I don't need high-speed GPU graphics. I just need lots of pixels. And I, do, and I like it to be quiet, so I wanted a fanless one. Um, also, I, I wanted one with uh, um, the uh, solid state drives instead of the spinning disk, because that eliminates the noise from the spinning disk. And wanted one with the heat controlled fan. So when you, you know, the CPU is ordinary, but the other stuff I built around it was all designed for uh, low noise operations, so, and they don't really make one that has that combination of features. So I buy the parts and screw it together and hope it works. Thank you, Walter. It was great. Thanks.